All right, let's get started. Thank you everybody for uh, coming today to uh, hang out with us in these exciting presentations. Today, we're gonna talk about how you can build providers and DAGs using the Airflow ecosystem. My name is Plinio Guzman, ecosystem engineer at Astronomer. And uh, let's get started. Uh, this talk will be divided into four sections. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the Airflow trajectory and the changes that Airflow 2.0 brought into the ecosystem. Then we're gonna run through a quick demo showing how you can quickly and easily build ELT DAGs uh, using the ecosystem and the tools that are available for you. And of course, we're gonna talk about how you can build your own providers and DAGs and then share them with the community. And don't worry, we'll leave ample time for questions and answers. And we'll also point you to the any resources or references and sample code that we discussed during the talk today. Let's get started. And what better place to start than with the protagonist of the story, the Airflow provider. As many of you know, Airflow providers encapsulate the logic that Airflow needs to connect to third-party services and modern cloud applications. Providers uh, have the abstractions over the APIs that make them interact with uh, the different services that, that your um, pipelines require. And uh, as, um, as this is structured with the common language that uh, Airflow follows, providers have modules within them. And the modules uh, are, for example, hooks, sensors, or operators that uh, you uh, use to author your DAGs. And as uh, some of you remember, Airflow used to come in a single core package that included all the providers inside of it. This uh, caused a couple uh, concerns within the community, uh, starting with uh, heavy images, uh, competition for uh, resources at a runtime, and what I like to call dependency hell, which is because you ended up importing a bunch of packages you weren't really gonna need, uh, you opened the door for conflicts in versioning uh, among them. It, it also um, stood to uh, have a bit of improvement in the way uh, documentation could be found. Roll forward to Airflow 2.0, came out December, in 2020. For this uh, major release, the Airflow PMC members decoupled providers from the core Airflow package, making for lighter uh, weight deployments and uh, Airflow images and minimal dependencies across them. This meant that uh, you could bring your own providers into the mix in easier ways that uh, were impossible before. Uh, thus, because the providers were independent from the core release cycles, they could be updated and debugged uh, at any uh, rate that was uh, necessary. Uh, and this also empowered and incentivized community members and the developers of the apps that they use to own and maintain the source codes for the providers. And now you might be asking yourself, with all these providers that are available, how do I navigate to find the ones that I need for my this particular pipeline? And how do I build my own uh, providers and DAGs in order to contribute it, them to the community and share them with my team? Well, cue in the Astronomer Registry. The registry aggregates the best bits of Airflow ecosystem so developers can uh, discover and share the integrations that they need. In here, you could find providers, their modules, and browse example DAGs that show contextual examples of how to implement uh, modules um, in the wild. This enhances the story of Airflow integrations and helps the community uh, speed up the developer experience by uh, surfacing high quality, best in class patterns, as well as metrics and certification stamps in order to show trust and quality uh, and promote the uh, best principles within the ecosystem. And to get uh, a contextual example of uh, how you might think about navigating the Airflow ecosystem when trying to build a pipeline for your team, let's start with an example that's close to home. Using the big names uh, that uh, you might recognize, uh, Salesforce, AWS, and Snowflake, let's build a quick example DAG for a hypothetical scenario. Let's say I have um, a team that uh, uh, dumps data into Salesforce uh, through the marketing team. And 
uh, wants to transform it uh, using um, a tool such as uh, Snowflake in this common pattern called uh, an ELT pipeline. So um, my task here is to build a process that copies data from the source system, uh, places it in the target system in a, a data lake on uh, AWS S3, and then transforms it into usable formats for modern cloud applications to consume. Uh, I'm going to um, jump into uh, the Airflow registry and begin my search for an example VAG that, that shows uh, best practice example of an ELT pipeline that more or less resembles what uh, I'm trying to build. And then I'll uh, scout for a couple uh, other bits and pieces in order to get my uh, DAG across the line. So uh, as you can see, uh, I'm in the registry and I can uh, search for something relevant to my DAG to find uh, an example such as, let's see, Salesforce. And I can browse, uh, I see the providers. There's a couple modules relevant to it. And uh, I see example DAGs that uh, might help me build uh, a scaffolding of my DAG that and then I can polish to uh, get across the finish line. Here I see Salesforce to Google Cloud Services. That's not what I need. Uh, Salesforce to Snowflake, let's uh, give that a go. And I can see in the profile page of this example DAG, uh, a one, two, three, steps on how to um, run it. I see here that it involves the AWS Snowflake and Salesforce providers. And just to double check what I'm getting into, I see the uh, representation of the DAG. Uh, it's not 100% what I'm looking for, but uh, this should be a good start. And uh, just to be sure, um, here I see what uh, requirements are gonna come in once uh, I deploy this sample deck. And uh, now um, I'm gonna clone this repository and uh, run it in my local uh, development environment. For this, uh, I already installed the Astronomer CLI, which helps me develop locally. Um, and now I'm gonna follow these instructions and clone the repository into my local environment. Let's go. I clone the repository and voila, I have a initial scaffolding of the DAG and uh, its requirements already here. Uh, viewing the DAG, I see um, that there are some um, variables that uh, I can start to tinker with in order to modify this to uh, my requirements. I know that uh, some of the operators I might want to change down the line, but uh, let's see what this looks like uh, when I run it. Uh, and before I do that, I notice here that the connection IDs are going to need to be set before uh, the DAC can run. And uh, a little a trick that I like that it comes with the Astro CLI is that if I have an airflow settings.yaml file, which has a format such as this one, I can uh, very easily import the connections and credentials that I need for uh, airflow to pick up. Here, uh, I would set, uh, for example, the connection IDs for Snowflake, S3, and Salesforce as they're required, as well as some environment variables. Uh, for sake of movie magic, um, I prepared an airflow settings.yaml already that uh, I'm going to import over to my project. And with that in place, I go back to the registry and I uh, see what the third step is in order to deploy this. This is pretty easy. Straightforward. Uh, CD into the directory and ask for the start. Let's dive right in. As you can see, the Astro CLI tool is spinning up a couple containers. I see here we got a Postgres scheduler and a web server spinning up. This is easy. Oh. 
and it added connections to, to Salesforce S3 Snowflake, as well as the environment variables that I had previously declared in the Airflow setting in YAML. Now, this um, configuration only works for local development. When I push this to production, I'm going to want to incorporate the credentials in a different way. But for now, since I'm uh, developing locally, this is uh, what I need to get started right away. Now, uh, I see the link to the web server. Let's follow that. Localhost 8080, and uh, by default, credentials are admin, admin. And right away, I see my DAG. But um, if, if you remember, I had mentioned that I was looking to um, add uh, more functionality to this. Um, for example, say my uh, DevOps team that manages S3 wants to uh, have tagging of the certain bucket items as uh, they're produced to give them a, a sense of uh, a trajectory of, of the data flow as well as uh, some sanity as they uh, manage the account. So let me jump back into the registry and see if I can find a module that uh, can do just that. Uh, right away, I found I find the uh, module that I'm looking for that puts tagging into the buckets. Let me um, see here's the description, the dependencies. I already have a uh, Amazon provider installed through the uh, other packages in the tag. Uh, uh, an import statement. Let's uh, throw this into my code. What else needs to happen here? I have the operator name. I see the parameters that it's going to take in. Um, there was only a way to make this an easier import. Maybe I can look at the example DAX to see how it looks uh, out in the wild in relationship to other operators. All right, so I see with get bucket put bucket tagging. This is what I'm looking for. And very easily, I can copy it over to my code. And now I'm just gonna clean this up a bit, readability. And because uh, I was already using the AWS connection, I can uh, transfer this over to my new operator and uh, I can change the parameters here to correspond to what's in the example DAG. Let me see. So bucket name I can take from this constant and let's uh, add a key value pair for the bucket tag saying um, something along the lines of origin DAG and its value, I can say um, E L T from Salesforce. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to put it downstream of the current tasks. That easy. I am now uh, ready to uh, see what this deck looks like, um, having used a couple bits and pieces from the ecosystem. Let's refresh. Let's take in a minute to update. There you go. And now we can run my DAG. What a breeze. And now that this is uh, complete, I'll uh, just make a couple modifications to adapt it to uh, my um, specific scripts uh, that are going to transform data from 
um, Salesforce to Snowflake and share it with my team. And at this point, you must might be asking yourself, what happens? Uh, what happens now? What happens if I have uh, another provider uh, that I want to be able to generate that links up to uh, an app that uh, may not have a native integration with uh, Airflow yet? Or what happens when uh, I want to uh, polish this DAG and then share it with a community so I can contribute to the best practices? Well, uh, here the uh, the registry also comes uh, in handy going to the home page and smashing the publish call to action up top, I can see that there is um, a form where I can submit my GitHub uh, links to both sample providers and sample DAGs that I generate and share with the community. L let's take a look of what sharing a, and generating a provider looks like. This repo shows the best in practice uh, structure in order to generate providers. It has uh, a scaffolding to have sensors, operators, hooks, and even example DAGs to come along with it. And my personal favorite unit test. Don't forget the unit test. And in order to generate a provider, all I have to do is fork this repo. Uh, it could live under uh, my own organization or my account. And after a few seconds, I'll be able to start tinkering based on the examples provided. Now, all I have to do is grab the relevant URL and submit it. to the registry. Uh, when I press the submit button, this will give you a direct line to myself and to my team in order for us to help you get this uh, provider or DAG that you wanna contribute to the community uh, in top, keep top shape and uh, publish in the registry. And this is how you can navigate the Airflow ecosystem in order to streamline your uh, DAG authoring experience and share with the community. Thank you.